Hi, I'm Edward Andrews and I'm part of the team who conduct worship at St Michael's Parish Church, Dallas, Rafford Parish Church and St Leonard's Parish Church, Forres, Moray, Scotland. I welcome you all wherever you are and whenever you're viewing this video. Today we finish working through the Gospel according to John chapter 6. We began with the feeding of the 5,000, the only event between the baptism of Jesus and the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, which is recorded in all four Gospels. It's only when we look at the full chapter we see that what looks like a feeding miracle becomes a subject of dispute and popular demands for Jesus to carry out more wonders. In the end, Jesus responds by saying that he is talking about spiritual food and that his body is that spiritual food. It's quite clear that John sees what Jesus is talking about being the context of the breaking of bread, the communion, the Eucharist, call it what you will, the event where the people of God gather around the table and share bread and wine. This is something we should be taking seriously. Being a Christian, even in a time of COVID, has to be by being part of a community of faith. And that community of faith is bound together by its joining as a community with Christ at his table. So our contemplation today is about the meaning of consciously being faithful to Christ as our Lord and Master, believing him not just the belief of, doc of doctrine, of effectively theological speculation, but the belief in carrying out his demands on us and realising that as God's people we're fed at the table of the body of the Lord. So let us worship God. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know you're the Holy One of God. We meet in the name of God, creator of the universe, source of true humanity, mother and father of all. We meet electronically and we meet spiritually, looking forward to meeting together in reality in the presence of God. We meet in the name of God, creator of the universe, source of true humanity, mother and father of all. We meet in the name of Jesus, word made flesh, saviour of fallen humanity, lover of all. We meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, midwife of new humanity, inspirer of all. Come then, eternal God, be present wherever we are, united in your power. Befriend us wherever we are, united in your power. Renew us wherever we are, united in your power. And the singing is hymn 196, Come, now is the time to worship.
Heaven is here and earth and the space is thin between them. Distance may divide but Christ's promise unites those bounded by time, those blessed by eternity. Let heaven be glad and let the whole earth cry glory. Heaven is here and earth and the church above and below is one. Let heaven be glad and let the whole earth cry glory. Heaven is here and earth and the God who made them is present. The Lamb, glorious on the throne, sits beside us. The Spirit of God, the Dove, makes her resting place among us. God inhales the breath of our prayers and has spread a table for our satisfaction. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Blessing and honour and glory and power be to our God for ever and ever. And yet, Father God, there's a black cloud between us and you. The eternal barriers which we raise between us, you love us, and yet claiming the freedom which you have given us as sentient beings, we go our own way rather than following your way. We build up a burden of unresolved guilt so we're self-absorbed, so in silence we remember the hidden sin and the burdens which we're carrying, the things which we've got wrong and are ashamed of. Father, forgive, for we knew what we were doing, but it seemed a good idea at the time. We trust in your eternal grace through the actions of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now knowing that we've been forgiven by your grace and love, we ask you to give us the confidence to be your people. Inspire us with dreams and visions so we may have the confidence to be your people in reality. Give us minds which are open to your challenge and emotions full of compassion and an understanding of what your demands on us really are, so that we are your people in reality, not just in claim and presentation. Give us a view of reality that the good news of Christ is at the centre of everything which we do and our relationships with all. O oh God, who in the sacrament of your body and blood has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Listen for the word of God, as is contained in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, reading verses 1 and 2, and verses 14 to 18. Then Joshua assumed all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summons the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the river of Euphrates and worshipped other gods. And at verse 14 to 18. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the river Euphrates and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. 
Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and amongst all the nations through which we travelled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord, because he is our God. The psalm is Psalm 34, verses 15 to 22. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Let us pray. Send your holy angels to watch over us, O loving God, that on our lips will be found your truth, and in our hearts your love. For his sake who died for love of our love, even Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel according to John, chapter 6 reading from verse 56 to verse 69. Jesus said, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascended to where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave me too, Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know you are the Holy One of God. Thanks be to God for the glorious gospel. Joshua had been leading his people. They'd come across the River Jordan from the wilderness where they had been for the previous 40 years. They had invaded the land which they believed that God had given to them, taken the cities and had carved the land up between the various families, the twelve tribes of Israel, 
Well, actually, only 11 tribes got land. The 12th tribe, Levi, the priests, received the offerings made to God. Our reading from the book of Joshua is set against the background when, old and well advanced in years, Joshua had met up with the leaders and had given them advice. Now he's addressing all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. There's a whole long passage which the lectionary omits all 12 verses of them. In it he recounts the holy history of the relationship between God and the people whom he had called. Now in verse 14 we find that the story is taken up again. Now despite what we think about the Israelites having under Moses become a people who were faithful to Yahweh, clearly Joshua doesn't believe the same, have the same understanding. Clearly he thought that the people still had, even if it was only mentally at the back of their cupboards as it were, the ancestral gods, the religious folk memory which every community have. Sometimes these ideas are so deeply embedded in our culture that we don't actually recognise them for what they are. Embedded in every community are the folk memories of the old religion in whatever form it took. But it wasn't just the old folk gods of the past, the gods who were no more than a vague communal memory, the real dangerous gods the gods of the Amorites in whose land they were living. These are the really dangerous gods. And there is much a temptation for us today as the gods of the Amorites were for the children of Israel. Our society has gone over to a belief in the great god of the market. That's the power behind so much of society today. There is a ruthless god of growth, which is believed that unless an economy is growing, there's something wrong. We even have to be careful over the false gods whom we have imported into Christianity. The distortions of the faith to suit our comfortable understandings, the compromises with power which the church has historically made on so many occasions, not so much with the state, but with the mores of society. And Joshua, son of Nun, was prepared to challenge his people that quite honestly, he didn't care what everyone else did, but his family were going to serve the Lord. And the people agreed that they too, because of what God had done for the community, would serve the Lord. They proclaimed, far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. It was still on the basis of the agreement made at Shechem and confirmed at other times and places. That was the reason why Jesus was incarnate in Palestine of his time, taking his proclamation to the spiritual and chronological descendants of the people who had made the promise at Shechem. It's always important for us to remember that there's a continuum which lies from the call of Abraham through to the life, death, resurrection and subsequent career of Jesus. For Jesus had come to the Jewish people and what he was saying to them can only be understood in the context of the holy history of the Jewish people. Now we've been looking at John 6 for the past month or so. And today we come to the climax, back to the statement, Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. 
Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Now I believe that this statement and the six verses or four before it can only be understood against the fact that in John's account of the events of the night when Jesus was betrayed, the only eating which is mentioned is Jesus dipping bread into the dish and giving it to Judas as a sign that he was going to betray him. And yet, as we see repeatedly in Acts, the key event of the early Christian community was that they met together for the breaking of bread. Jesus teaches, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. The Christian church has tied itself into knots trying to tame this passage so we can accept it. Accusations of cannibalism dra dogged early believers as they recited these words in our ancient rites. Theologians have spent centuries explaining the mysteries of transubstantiation, consubstantiation and the real present or the mystical presence alive in this sacrament. It's still weird and it speaks to an unavoidable, unresolvable ability in this thing called faith. At some point, faith requires faith. At some point, our ability to make logical sense of something divine stops. Faith assumes uncertainty rather than certainty. What is going on here with the flesh, the blood, the eating, the living forever? We don't know. It's a conflict that remains unresolved within the arena of our minds. That's why I believe that this story and this teaching can only be resolved when we look at the Last Supper in the synoptics and what we would understand about how the first disciples understood his words and actions from their experience of breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. The truth Jesus is trying to impart will only begin to make sense with a paired action, with a shared experience, with a participation in a communal meal and in the physical sensation of knowing at a level beyond our intellectual reach that this bread has been broken for the life of the world. And that's why the singing after the, these thoughts is we shall break bread as Jesus did before us. It's a song that is the sleeve notes for it, come off the wild goose, resource group CD, the truth which sets us free. And it says, it's a song which reflects what might be called the practical implications of the Eucharist. It's not simply a memorial feast, but has resonances of social justice as it consecrates the products, both earth and human labour, and evokes the many occasions which Jesus shared meals, sometimes to the jargon of his hosts. However, the story doesn't finish here, for there were those who took exception to what Jesus was saying. Even disciples gave up. They could handle a, mirac a miracle worker. They could handle a teacher. They might even have been able to handle a critic of the religious status quo. What they could not handle was the mystical passage. It's here that Jesus effectively gives people permission to go. He told them, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. And then he's saying, This is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Walked. Very often as Christians, we've lived in a bubble. A bubble where the expectation is that everyone has a relationship with Christ. We're uncomfortable with the idea that people might not respond. 
We put a response to Christ in with the idea of eternal conflict or survival. But if we see following Christ to do with life in this world, being his disciples, bringing in the kingdom, then the call to obey is somewhat different. We leave what happens after physical death to the grace of God, which is our only hope anyway. And we work as salt, as light, as yeast in the community, bringing in the kingdom, the rule of God, where there is justice and truth. Basically, Jesus is then asking the same question of his followers who remained as Joshua was asking his Choose today whom you will serve, except he asks it in a different way. Perhaps the NIV translation isn't the best here, where it says in verse 67, You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. A better, more literal translation of the Greek says, Jesus therefore said to the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? It was Peter who replied for them, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. The people responded to Joshua on the basis of what Yahweh had historically done for them. Peter and the disciples who stayed responded to the way that they did respond personally to Jesus because they had come to knowledge that Jesus is the Holy One of God, the Christ. And that's where we're choosing. Choosing like the people at Shechem whom they will serve, choosing like the disciples whom they will stay with, whom they and we will break bread with, and whom we and they will drink wine which will strengthen us spiritually. And may God grant us faith and understanding to truly follow Christ in love and fellowship. The song is the truth that sets us free. 57. We will break bread as Jesus did before us. I quoted the sleeve notes in my talk. In the songbook, John Bell says, The celebration of the Eucharist has multiple resonances. It's not simply a memorial feast, it's also a foretaste of heaven, a continuation of the table meals of which Jesus was found and many things beside. This unison song is therefore best suited to be sung before or during the receiving of Holy Communion. But of course we don't have that privilege on these online services. But let us think of the meaning of the Lord's Table, Communion, the Eucharist, whatever your faith community is happy calling it. It, Christ's gift of his body as the bread of life to the church, his people. We shall break bread as Jesus did before us In fields and banquets, in an upstairs room His true companions meet around a table We shall break bread We shall break bread because the world is hungry And Jesus showed us Here 
in the bread and wine which earth supplies us, refined by skill and will of human hands. We taste the depth and richness of God's goodness. We shall break bread. Glory to God, whose providence sustains us. Glory to Christ, who calls us to his feast. And to the Spirit, source of transformation, Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you told the people in the synagogue in Capernaum that whosoever eats your flesh and drinks your blood remains in you and you in them, and that the one who feeds on you will live because of you, the bread that came down from heaven, upon which, if we feed, we will live forever. In an upstairs room in Jerusalem with your disciples on the night in which you were betrayed as they and you were sitting at a meal. You took a piece of bread and broke it. You gave it to your disciples saying this is my body it is broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later after you and they had eaten you took a cup of wine and said this cup is a new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. So, can, so while we cannot do what you did because of distance and discipline, may we remember the times in cathedral and in camp, on pit bings and churches, in front rooms and in kitchens, where we've taken and given bread and wine the produce of earthly of earth and fruit of human labour. For in these you have promised to be present, and through these you can make us whole. So even though the signs, symbols and reality are not physically present, grant that we may spiritually receive of your presence real among us. God who wants us to understand lessons of life and death and who gives to us in flesh and blood, bread and wine, ways to make sense of our communion with you. Help us receive what we cannot grasp. Feed our faith in ways that allows us to taste and see that life is good and death is not the end. Eternal God, conceiver and shaper, ruler and saviour of the world, we bless you that awake and aware we are free to praise you, bound in the family of Christ to worshippers in every land we worship you, glad to be part of your pattern and purpose for humanity. We ask you that you may liberate all who follow Christ from narrowness of vision and limited discipleship. Make your people keen to serve you in the public worlds of business, politics, education, law, industry, and wherever the welfare of hum humanity may be improved. Thus, may compassion and justice inform our national life and institutions as keenly as they address our consciences. Creator of God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers. Open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. Holy God, our ears are ringing with the sounds of voices crying out in distress people without names, yet whose faces stare at us every day. Children, malnourished, mothers beyond hope in their grief, fathers helpless to provide, devastated by famine, trapped by war or natural disasters. So we cry out in despair. We cry to you, the God of babies and mothers and fathers. We cry to you for justice and for help to know 
what on earth to do when our ears are deaf because the cries are all too familiar help us to respond with urgency once more when our tears have dried up because we've seen it all before rekindle our sympathy and our generosity when our anger has abated because cruelty is a fact of life stir within us a new sense of justice save us from hypocrisy speaking words of peace but not making peace praying for reconciliation but not daring to build bridges criticizing politicians but remaining hard-hearted at home save us from apathy leaving the hard work to others complaining that we can't do anything about injustice failing to get involved in issues in our local community save us from insensitivity going along with the selfishness of society reinforcing the prejudices of our culture failing to notice the needs on our doorstep fail us from a comfortable gospel designed to save only our souls aimed at the church rather than the world expecting the glory without the pain the resurrection without the cross save us from making jesus into a harmless mascot a comforter but not a challenger a storyteller but not a debater a donkey rider but not a turner over of tables a teacher but not a transformer a lover but not a redeemer then may we be better equipped to be people of your kingdom which confronts and challenges the divisions and the hatred in the world to the glory of your holy name we hold before you the issues which we feel called to intercede to you about the world's woes and sufferings the distress of individuals Holy One, hear our prayers and make us faithful stewards of the fragile bounty of this earth, so we may be entrusted with the riches of heaven. We thank you for those who have been before us, who gave us the knowledge of the gospel, and who are now with you. Give us the understanding of the faith, that we may be faithful in our time, to the building up of the community of faith. These are prayers we make in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We close this act of worship by singing hymn 506, All I Once Held Dear, Built My Life Upon otherwise known as Knowing You, Jesus. Graham Kendrick, the writer of many popular religious songs, assembled what he called Song Resources for Lockdown. Some song resources for use during the COVID-19 crisis. Simple lyric videos for the Songs of Comfort and Hope playlist on YouTube, which can be used for churches and individuals for worship and reflection. This is one of them. And we pay tribute to Graham for his thoughtfulness in letting us use one of his very popular songs.
All I once thought gain I have counted lost Spent and worthless now Compared to this Knowing you, Jesus Knowing you There is no greater thing You're my all, you're the best You're my joy, my righteousness Wherever we go, may the joy of God the gracious be with us. Wherever we may go, may the faith of Christ the kindly be with us. Wherever we go, may the encompassing of the Spirit of grace be with us. Wherever we go, may the presence of the Trinity surround us to bless and to keep us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining in this act of worship. I commend you into the care of God and his love. God bless. Amen.